Hello everyone, my name is Andrew Bonbosher, and today I want to talk about music production and um, not necessarily in the light that I previously discussed with my tutorials and how to make a specific sound or you know the technical aspects of music production, but I want to talk more along the lines today um, about the mental and um, emotional aspects of making music and how a lot of us can get stuck in certain places that aren't covered in books or aren't covered in technical details because it's not so much about how to make a sound, it's you know how to move forward with your actual productions. So um, this is a new think piece that I'm going to start um, making and um, the first topic that I wanted to talk to you today about was setting up constraints in your music arbitrary constraints so just random things that you limit yourself while you're making your tracks to try to push yourself in a direction um, you know past that plateau per se and um, there was this book called uh, making music and it's made by Ableton and it's incredible it talks about a lot of these aspects that I'm going to be talking about but I kind of want to just you know talk to talk to you in a, in a more personal um, type of fashion so when it comes to arbitrary constraints, let's say that, um, you know, in this day and age, you have every instrument you've ever want at your disposal. Like you have any synthesizer, any sample, any digital audio workstation, virtual standalone. You could literally have um, everything. And that's the problem is that like when you have infinite possibilities, you don't know what to choose from. You don't know what sounds best. And uh, that can get really, really daunting and really discouraging as far as making music. So when it comes to, um, you know, arbitrary constraints, um, it's really cool to just take things away from yourself. And uh, what I mean by that is even saying like, um, for example, in the Prince song, rest in peace, Prince, um, in the Prince song, When Doves Cry, um, he doesn't use a bass line in that whole track. He doesn't use any bass and he leaves that space open in the track. Now, personally, I wouldn't have noticed that unless I was looking for it or if I read about it in, in this Making Music book. But it's brilliant. It, you know, you don't use bass lines and then that way it forces you to figure out how to make a track without an essential element of music. And uh, it turned out to be, you know, one of his biggest hits. And uh, it's really open sonically without the bass line and it gives it so much more room it's brilliant never really think about that until like you know you read about it or listen for it another example is uh, Peter Gabriel in his album Melt he didn't use any cymbals or hi-hats in the entire thing so he had to use different pieces of percussion to move the tracks forward in a way that you know cymbals and hi-hats do really easily so um, but that's when things really start to open up for you creatively, you know, creatively, sorry, creatively, creatively, when you start to take things away from yourself. So, you know, taking away essential elements of a, of a track and trying to make something with it is one part of it. And, um, you know, there's another solution where, um, and I've been working on this as well, is, you know, it's one thing to make your own samples, right? You, you, know, you make your own samples and you make your own tracks unique using those own samples and that's great, grand and wonderful. But it's another thing to try to make an entire track out of just one of those samples that you've, uh, you've made. You know, you, you sample your kitchen faucet. How are you going to make a kick drum out of that? How are you going to make, you know, a, a, bass, a bass line out of that? That's when things get really fun. It's because like you're forcing yourself to learn how to make sounds that aren't supposed to be that sound. And that's a really nice constraint to really push you out of that plateau and really start, you know, figuring out what kind of music you want to make or just something different. If you know what you want to make, but you're tired of making that and you know, you feel like you're kind of just like doing it for the sake of doing it. Try something new. Try to make a song out of a whole sample. Try to take a bass line out of a track. Try to not use cymbals. Try not even to use a bass drum. See what happens if you don't use a kick drum. That's really scary to me because I love kicks. Like that's that's what I do. I love kicks. Um, so those are just a few things, a few ideas to kind of like literally just push you out of that creative rut. You know, taking by literally taking elements away from yourself, 
moving forward. It's kind of weird how that works, but it does. I've, I've definitely been working on it, and it does. The other thing I wanted to talk to you about with um, the constraints is, of course, you can set yourself with deadlines. And deadlines are really, really interesting because everybody can set a deadline for themselves. But it's holding yourself accountable that really becomes the hard part. So um, it's one of those recommendations where if you can't hold yourself accountable, like sometimes I can't, I'm a human being. Everybody's a human being. You just want to go play you know play some video games you don't you know you don't want to deal with whatever and uh but if you ask someone to hold you accountable say listen i want to get this track done by this date and you need to let me know when that's coming up you know because i'm not going to hold myself accountable so if you have someone else hold you accountable that can actually really kind of snap you into gear and make sure that you get what you need to get done in the time that you've set for yourself. Because if you just do it to yourself, by yourself, let's just be honest, like it's really hard to do. But if you have someone else doing it to you, like a boss or your parents or something like that, it's a lot easier to try to like work with that. So it's one of those things where I'd really recommend um, if you can't make time deadlines for yourself ask someone else to do it for you ask someone to to really push you to you know like sit down get it done and the time amount you know time allotted and just call it call it good um and um another thing i wanted to talk to you about the last thing really was um with these with these arbitrary constraints is um a thing um there's two things. There's two. There's two things on online on YouTube that I really like watching, and it's um, one is Fact TV's Against the Clock, which is, um, you know, producers and beat makers have only ten minutes to make a song, and that really forces you to just lay stuff down, not think about it, and move on. So the arbitrary constraint of time and on you know on your productions, even if it's ten minutes can really, really push you to just lay it down and then come back to it. Um, the other thing is Mass Appeal, and they have Rhythm Roulette, which is you get, you're blindfolded, you take three vinyls out of a record store, and then you try to make a song by sampling those three vinyls. And, um, you know, there's not so much a time limit on that per se. However, you only have three vinyls to work with. You only have so much material to use to where you need to make a track. And I think that's brilliant. Those are a couple of ways just to really push you out of, you know, your habits. Because we all develop them. And uh, they get, you know, they get stagnant. They get stagnant. Really stagnant. So um, that's all I wanted to talk to you guys about today was setting arbitrary constraints on yourself to really push yourself to make better music and uh, to really, for lack of a better phrase, think outside the box. So um, thank you so much for watching and I really hope that uh, you know this definitely sparks some creativity with us music makers because we're all in this together. We are all just doing our thing, trying to make tunes and music and just want to feel good. Um, so yeah. And um, if you like the video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And uh, this is just one, one part of a, a new Think Piece section that I'm going to be making. So definitely stay tuned for more of that. But um, other than that, um, thank you so much for watching again. And uh, we'll see you next time.